Welcome to the second lecture of this unit and what we'll do now is introduce these two important concepts that we'll be using throughout this course in when trying to describe current flow in nano devices. And these two concepts then, let me try to explain. So we are interested in the current that flows in a device when you apply a voltage across it. But let's first start with the equilibrium case where there is no voltage applied. Okay. Now the first question is what are the energy levels available in the channel? Now as you know if you had a hydrogen atom you'd have discrete levels which are separated by quite a bit like 5 electron volts or 10 electron volts. As you get to bigger things the energy levels come together so they look say more like this, more dense like this. And when you get to a solid usually these levels are awfully close together and rather than draw lots of lines like this it's more convenient to define something called the density of states which tells you how many states you have per unit energy. So a typical density of states plot might look something like this. This axis is energy and this takes a little getting used to because you see, you see usually you plot the independent variable horizontally. I mean that's the x-axis usually. But here actually it's convenient to draw the energy axis vertically because that's the way we draw the energy levels. See, And what the density of states like this value here, what it tells me is how many of these energy levels I have per unit energy in there. So when you go to this region for example, the density of states is zero. So what that means is there are no states here at all. And then down here we have again st states available at this energy. I have shown them here. I should have drawn something like this down here as well. You see? So then that would correspond to this picture that I have drawn. So this is the density of states plot that you kind of the first thing you need when you want to talk about current flow in a device. So how do you know what's the density of states? Well experimentally usually you measure it using different types of experiments. The most common one is this photo emission for example. Photo emission means you have electrons here. If you hit it with light you can excite an electron and knock it out into the vacuum. So the idea is an electron inside the solid of course stays there because the energy here is lower than if it is outside. So this uh, being outside that's what you call the vacuum level. So if an electron were outside that's what its energy would be. Inside the solid it's something less than that and so if you take that as zero it would mean all energy levels in a solid would be negative quantities. I mean that's why they stay there otherwise they would jump out. And you can hit it with light, photons which have sufficient energy and then there you have the photoelectric effect whereby these electrons will get knocked out of the solid. Okay? And typically that energy that is needed to knock these highest electrons out of the solid is on the order of say 5 to 10 electron volts. So these are like what you call the valence electrons, the ones that are really at the, have the highest energies here. Now as I mentioned before, there's lots of other states down here, the core electrons, which would take a lot more energy to knock out. These would be like kilovolts down there. But as far as current flow is concerned, what really matters is the stop part. The part near the, I guess what, that's the next concept I'll explain, is this Fermi energy. Now what's that? Well, if you look in the contact, so you have the density of states in the channel and in the contacts I've drawn this continuous density of states out here and overall at equilibrium you see there is a level up to which all the states are filled and as I explained in the introductory lecture, electrons naturally want to go to the lowest energy state but because of the exclusion principle they can't go all go into the lowest one. So instead they fill up a lot of states. So if you had a million electrons they would fill up like a million states. And one point that sometimes causes a little confusion is people say well isn't it like every state can hold two electrons upspin and downspin? Well 
I think the right way to say it is every state only holds one electron, but usually you have two separate states, uh, one for upspins and one for downspins. So it is as if the states come in pairs, but the point is each state holds only one electron. That's the exclusion principle. Okay. So there is this level then, which you call the electrochemical potential or the Fermi level, which separates all the filled states from the empty ones. So if we are at zero temperature, everything below it would be filled, everything above it would be empty. Well, what if I raise the temperature? Well, then you see some of these electrons from down here will have enough thermal energy to actually jump up and occupy these higher states. And the distribution at equilibrium will be given by something called this Fermi function. So what I've plotted here is this Fermi function. Again, the axis on the, this vertical axis is E minus mu. That means it's the energy referred to mu, which means at mu, the, this axis is zero. And then E minus mu, here E is greater than mu, here E is less than mu. And it's divided by this quantity kT. That's something that also appears all the time in our discussion. So this is called the thermal energy. This K is called the Boltzmann constant and T is the absolute temperature. And the actual mathematical function describing this, you see this function you'll notice at energies far below mu is one. And that's what you'd expect because far below mu, all states are filled. And what this function tells you is what fraction of the states are filled. So down here, we expect 100% to be filled. So the function is one. Up here, we expect them to be completely empty. And so the function is zero, you see? So it function goes from zero to one. And the mathematical form of this function looks something like this. It is one divided by one plus exponential E minus mu over KT. So when that quantity is negative, then it is exponential of a large negative number, which is zero, and so the function becomes one. When that number is big, like exponential of a positive number, that's a very large number. And so one divided by a large number, that's what makes it a very small number, it goes to zero. So you could take that function, plot it out, and see how, you know, these days it's very easy to plot it out on MATLAB or Mathematica, whatever you're comfortable with, and you can see how that function will look. And one thing, as I said, is very important that comes up often in your thinking and your discussions is this thermal energy, KT. And that KT is roughly 25 milli electron volt. You see, it is a, the dimensions are energy, and the MKS unit for energy is joules. Joule is like a coulomb times a volt. But what is commonly used though, in terms of describing electronic energies is rather than joules, we usually use electron volts. And this is a milli electron volt. So if you write it out, 25, the milli is the 10 to the minus three, and electron volt is like one electron times one volt. So how do you convert it to MKS units? Like if you want joules, well, one electron is this 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. So you can see that if you wanted to write energies in joules, you'd usually always be carrying around this 10 to the minus 19th type of thing with you. And that's inconvenient. And so what's commonly done is when you talk of energy, you talk in terms of electron volts, but you should be clear on how to handle the units and how to convert them. Okay. Well, one last thing, you see, uh, so we have introduced these two concepts, the density of states and the Fermi function, but we talked about what the picture looks like at equilibrium. If you apply a voltage, go away from equilibrium, then what happens is, as I mentioned in my introduction, the two contacts, instead of both having the same electrochemical potential, they shift with respect to each other. Because when you have applied a voltage, the positive side, all the energies, including the electrochemical potential, which tells you how far they are filled, everything sinks, everything goes down. So that's why on this side, everything is lowered by 
QV. So this is the picture then that we'll use in our next lecture to discuss a formula for current. So we'll talk about how electrons flow. Thank you.